right, so real quick, we are actually tearing out um, this patch of zinnias, which, you know, is starting to get lots of powdery mildew, um, not getting so many big, beautiful blooms now, and they're just gonna start to lose them and vigor. So, and it's just kind of nearing the end of the season. As you can see, all of the buds are kind of going to seed at this point. Um, you could leave these in and take the seed and save them, but I wanted to give you an idea of how many flowers you're actually gonna get from one plant. If you pinch your zinnias, here's your main stem, and then look at all of these, all of these branches that come up and they produce flowers. So this one, oh my God, what are we, upwards of like 30 flowers on this? <laughs> and each one of these you could pick and harvest for flowers. So I just wanted to give you an idea of how much zinnias produce on one plant. I mean, this is just like an insane amount of flowers, which is why people love zinnias. They are super productive. And as long as you cut them and cut them and cut them, um, you know, as they're growing the flowers, it's gonna, you're gonna continue to get these side, bud, um, these side buds to branch out and create more flowers. So that is one of the super big perks about growing zinnias. And man, these were super productive, even though we at some point lost our ability to keep up on picking them. But now we're taking them out due to powdery mildew, which is typical for zinnias. Um, but we cannot complain about all the production that we got this year. It was amazing. Ooh, nice and dark. And I'm not talking about you. <laughs> I wish. <sighs> So we got a layer, we got some bone meal underneath this awesome compost. Got a nice little, probably half a yard, three quarters of a yard. Oh, that's a quite full half a yard. It is quite full. Um, got some monarchs on the zinnias today. The last hurrah for them as they're starting to migrate south. Beautiful though. Aww. That makes me so happy. They're so pretty. Anyway, I'm being distracted, but we have lots of strawberries. So I actually bought these from MI Gardener in the spring and potted them up so that I could use them at the kids' garden, uh, for which we picked some strawberries there, but it gave them a chance to really establish and look how big they grew. So these are now like filling out one gallon size pots and they are perfect for planting right now. And it's perfect time for planting. So we're feeding the soil and we're getting in an entire row of strawberries, which I'm excited about. So this is where we had a row of flowers. This, the whole center was basically weeds, but it actually didn't take us very long to weed it. Um, it came out pretty easy. It's been raining here like, like it does in Washington pretty much. Oh year it's been a weird weird year but anyway the soil is super mucky but it also makes for easy weeding so we're gonna get these in we're gonna space these about 12 inches apart um and then hopefully cut the runners next year so that the plant really establishes and we get some productive strawberries because everybody loves strawberries especially you and my kids all right they are happily snuggled in Hopefully, we get some dang strawberries in the spring. Yay! I, I think we did pretty good. They might not totally be straight, but <laughs> they're in and it's gotta be happier than being in that pot. So, done for the day. See? Oh, everybody is so happy. Look, we have, we, we actually have our, in our pollinator garden, a black swallowtail caterpillar, actually a few of them. Two. Look at this one. Look at how small it is. So that must be a different generation. Where are we? See? Right here. Ah. There he is with this little white stripe. Hard to focus when they're so small. But... Cool. So guess what? It was not a total loss. Oh my gosh. Here's another one. Wow. So cool. Yay. Our little mini pollinator dill patch. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> and... Tithonia. Don't ever make fun of me laughing. Don't you ever. So that's cool. It's all right. And that will, I'll oh, probably so replant some seed there because I don't think we're going to have time for it to go to seed. Kind of like 
Yeah, these these are kind of. Um, Dude, look at the size of that grasshopper. Yeah. Let me show them. Look at that guy in there. Where? Where is he? Hold on. Holy, yeah, he's a big. Where guy. is he in the camera? Right oh, there here. he is. Oh my god. It's exceptional quality. <laughs> <laughs> here, he can have your phone. I with. can grow bugs, can I? Oh my god. Wow, he's cool. Moles, voles, grasshoppers. I wonder if there's any more things on the tomato plants. Should uh. I look? No, because they only have one generation. I think we cleared them right out. Oh. But this is very cool. Did we tag these? Oh, we have to tag these. Like, what is this guy? Beautiful. I think that actually might be a similar one to one that's open over there. Oh, look so at this one. we can match it. I know. Dragon, so pretty. Oh, Dragonberry. Oh, look. The bees Dragon. are cold and wet. See him? Yeah. And look at that thing is leaning. Leaning. Terrible job I did staking. I want to see if that's the same dahlia that's over here because it looks the same. Although this one looks a little more orangey. I don't know. You'll have to tell me what you think. Maybe this one. Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Let's see what that is. Are these tagged? We're going to have to tag these. Oh, that broke right off. Uh, this one. Does, I don't know. Great. This one doesn't have a name either, so that means I will not know. I'll just know they match. Maybe it's written on the tuber. That could be. Some of them do stamp their tubers. Let's see if this one Ooh, another over here. matches. I know. Hey, you didn't see this one. Does this match? Mm, oh, wait, not wait. really. Where? This one and this other one down here. Oh, I missed him. Oh, little baby guy. No, don't touch him. I'm not. I'm oh, he's a tiny me. guy. Cool. Cool. This guy's big. Wow, so black swallowtails. Yay. Do enjoy like your little... Tails. Enjoy your... I guess I can't cut these for bouquets now. Nope. They are now food for capitillers. Catter Catertailers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you ain't right. God, you're about as you're about <laughs> you're about as as smart as I am. All right, let's go. My my milkweed patch is not happy. I'm hoping next year they all revive. I hope there's an alive root somewhere. This looks like crap. I Kept know. the weeds out though. Yeah, it, you know what? Honestly, it did. That's how hard and compact the soil is. Even the weeds wouldn't grow. All right, let's go on to something else. Oh, I'm being stung to death. <laughs> Ow! What is your problem? Ow! I'm dying. <gasps> Ow! I have stinging nettle in my elbow because I lost my freaking balance digging ginger and I now have... <laughs> Dude, that hurts. Ow! God almighty. It couldn't give me a euphoric feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Had to on. make you feel like... Oh, I was having a great day. Let's see. Yes. Everyone, oh no. Does anyone care? Ow! I have to get those little hairs out of my out of my elbow. Let me oh. see. What does it look like? Oh. No, the flower. Oh. You don't care about my boo boo. Oh. This look. This whole thing is singing nettle right here. Oh, and you know what? Wow. It's just like all you have to do is brush against it, and you die. Oh. But I'm tough. Back to work. Hey yeah 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 yeah. That is not fun. It's far too early and cold to be doing this. I'm surprised you're not like, what are you doing? Oh, I know you by now. I I'm redoing it. Yeah. You know I I'm actually, I used to love doing this. You know, just like take apart gardens and re-put them back together. I'm taking one of my clown pants um, seedlings that actually did not have stripes, but had big, gorgeous, dark purple flowers. And I'm going to put it here because those bloom yellow. And I, I like that. Um, Spider-Man's nemesis, I'm going to move over a little bit because he's really tall. So I'm kind of doing a revamp and then I'm doing a little bit of uh, this beautiful lamb's ear. It stays little and it blooms purple stalks of flowers. I actually cut the flowers off because I just like the foliage, but I'm going to put that along the border. Um, and then I put some astilbian um, in the front here after I took out those big Amsonia clumps because they were just so big and sloppy and this is going to be like much neater and tidier 
You know, when you sit out the patio and I just like look over and everything is flopping with all the rain we had this year. I'm like, you know what? I didn't know I was going to do this this year, but I kind of feel good. I think I predicted it yesterday that every time you start weeding your garden oh, and cutting back, I you know. start changing it. Well, the thing is, there are things that I don't like in the garden. And um, if they bug me and I have the opportunity... Like I thought this weekend was gonna be a total washout, but we got like what four hours in yesterday. Is my hair a wreck? I just realized I'm like just getting out of bed. You this, look great. this is real gardening, uh, folks. Um, but yeah, so I we got actually some hours in yesterday, and we didn't think we would be outside at all. So I'm excited. So I kind of got a jump start on this, and then now I'm just sort of like, oh my gosh. So next year, this is going to come up and be totally different. Yay! So for other people who, you know, can't seem to make up their minds and love to move things around. Oh, my God. It's totally fun that way. Is there a perfect time to do it? Is now the time to now's start it. moving plants? Yes. Now is it. Perfect time. Because you still have a couple months before you're real, like, hardcore. And I honestly am moving, like, big chunks of stuff. So if you can do this at all, it's great. When you dig them up, if you can dig up with a lot of the dirt around the roots, they're really not gonna be affected. You'll have the same size plant. When, when they're kind of affected is when you dig them like this and you have the bare roots. These are all seeds, like seed plants. I had clumps here. I had a David Austin roses, rose here that just, it started out okay, they just died. I'm assuming it just drowned. Um, but, and then we have a lot of, not, no deadheading happening this year. So we did get seedlings and I'm sure there were seeds from last year that sprouted. So I just cleaned up that clump. I kind of divided up allium. This was like a little um, round clump and I just divided some. So I have a little bit now even on each side of the rock, which I like. Um, yeah, and I just taking this big, beautiful um, clown fan seedling without stripes, but the coloring is so pretty on it. And look how much it multiplied. Like that's only two years old and I must have like eight fans in there. So I'm going to put him back here. Yeah, but you almost like open up a can of worms because now you have plants that you have to find new homes for here. Well, sort of. The good thing is when you dig like this, what are you after? Huh? When you dig them like this, See how I, there's like just a big massive chunk of roots with the dirt. I did the same thing here. See this? Oh, they're, they gotta be like 50 pounds a piece. They, they actually don't stress much when you do it that way and you do it in the cool weather. It's now, you know, 40s, 50s. Good working weather. Oh, you don't have to sweat. You don't like, oh, it's just great. No bugs. This is the exact time to do it and next year i'll be like oh that's right i moved him here look how pretty you know. well don't you I'll know be a the little role more obnoxious than i am this year because i'll have i'll have i'll surprise myself because i never really remember what i do i just kind of oh yeah that's right so i get all these little fun surprises throughout the year well don't you know the rule that you don't give a man a honey do list on sundays it's football sunday today. i didn't give you any list i'm out here minding my business let's let's be honest well you want to come out huh it's that guilt treatment of the husband's inside relaxing enjoying I, his day go for it while his wife is outside working so hard i'm actually not yeah but i enjoy this it's not like i'm like oh my back it's okay i got it although in a few years i might be like that um so i pulled some of these from the little porch garden because they were overgrowing the rock wall and these things grow like crazy i actually just ripped them i didn't even cut them out i just ripped them and they already have roots on them so we're gonna put in a little clump of these and let them there's let them like take over this corner because they're so pretty I mean, the foliage is kind of gross right and now. And where did you steal them from? The porch garden. Okay. But this is going to be pretty, and it's going to fill in here, and it's going to be silver. So it'll, like, it'll have interest whether it flowers or not, and I like that. I mean, they look a mess now because I have muddy hands. But if you want to go see what they look like on, in the porch garden, they look beautiful. 
right now. Like their foliage is just like glistening in the sun. So you don't have to feel guilty. I'm in my element, man. I'm, I'm having a good day. My kids are playing with their friends. Well, good. I won't feel guilty when I'm doing absolutely nothing. Yes. Well, dishes could be done. Well. I won't, I won't guilt trip you into those, but I know that comment will make it happen anyway. I think I'm going to buy dishes that have flower prints on them. Why? So maybe you get excited when you're doing the dishes. Yeah, that will never happen. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to edit all the times you get excited and you make these weird noises about these plants when they bloom. <laughs> what are you I, after? I'm sure if uh, there was a guy out there watching one of your videos, uh, the wife would be like, what are you watching in there? <laughs> I can't help it, I get excited. What are you after? He's barking at an acorn. No, he's, he sees something up there. What are you after? He was over here barking at the tree before. Oh, now she's in the woods. She don't know. She's barking up the wrong tree again. She is. She, she's crazy. At least I get my exercise. So yeah, so that's my plan. And, and this will be so cool. I, I, I just can't wait like next year, you know. And then in the fall, I'll be like, I have to move this. I didn't know this was gonna do that. I think that's the fun part about gardening though. Like some people might be like, oh gosh, this took over. It looks sloppy and then they feel defeated. I'm kind of like, nope, okay. I know what size you're gonna get. And then I put it somewhere where it needs to be. You're always gonna move things because it could tell you it's gonna grow 24 inches on the tag. But if it grows 36 here, then it's a little too big for the spot I wanted it in. So. It's okay to move stuff around. The tags don't always tell the truth. And depending on where you have it, how much sun, how happy it is, you're just never gonna know how happy or how sad it's gonna be until you get it there. And it might be great the first year, you know, only grows the, the actual 24 inches because I loved it there last year. And then this year it's like, oh, well, you gave me an inch, I'm gonna take 12 more. So you think plants have emotions? <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, my uh, plants do, yes. Yeah. They, I, they match my they match my vibe. Um so yeah, so that will kind of like it'll probably take over. I actually need to move that over. We may have to plant some Prozac yeah. in these gardens. I don't know about that. I'm gonna take that out actually and put it back. You're here. stressing so, them out. Yes. Oh, I'm good at that. Well, you're uprooting them all the time and moving them. So no, if plants do have emotions. You know what? They didn't, none of this got moved last year. I don't think. What did I really do? Nothing, but that guy's going to come out. And I'll probably just let the hyssop like take over back there. Now it's leaning, but might actually bring it in and give it a place where it can do its thing. Cause that's always pretty. I love that. Um, Want to see a cool flower? So this I tried to intentionally grow up the arbor. And I'm just gonna take How it How am I supposed to see this it? This is a vine, it grew late, but it's called a snail vine. Look at the flower. It actually looks like snails. And then they open to that really pretty flower. They're actually supposed to be more purple, but we're cold, so the temperature's kind of affecting it a little bit. But how cool is that? Yeah. So had I planted it like, properly and on time i probably would have a whole bunch of these because there's a ton of buds it's just really late and now it's gonna be cold and it's a tropical so so that won't cold. come back next no. year and you know what it's not far enough along to get the seed from either so maybe it grew so slow because oh, it looks like one. snails look it oh you're quick that's probably why they call it a snail vine but look oh i broke it but yeah, they're cool. Like where else can you find cool little flowers like that? Um, and the leaves are kind of pretty, although they remind me of poison ivy. So, yeah. Now, where did you find a snail vine? Can you pick that up? So what happens is I get these like emails that, oh, all the new varieties for 2023 are here. Oh God, I'm destroying it. Um, and so, you know, 
It's like clickbait for me. Oh, let's go check out what the new varieties are. So you go in and you check them out and you're like, oh, that looks really cool. I have no place to grow that, but I'm gonna buy it anyway. And you get like five seeds in a little pack. But you get to experience fun stuff like that. I've never grown a snail vine. I never even knew that was in existence. So that was from Baker Creek actually has really cool, unique stuff from vegetables to like flowers and vines and just like different and unique varieties of stuff. So I always love getting specialty seeds or specialty varieties and just seeing what I can grow. As a matter of fact, you want to see what I pulled from their catalog this year? I think so. All right, yes. hold on. I'm going to get you, I'm going to show you a couple seed packs. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were going to get a garden tour here. Are you going to be able to find something on that kitchen table or? I should probably cut the video here because it's going to be 10 minutes in between. Ready? Believe it or not, I put all my new seeds that I get. They're like treasure. So I found they have this one, poppy. It's a poppy, but it's called hens and chicks, which if you're familiar with the succulent hens and chicks, you know, they're okay. But the, the fancy part of this is the pod. You see? see the pod? I'm not the only one who puts hens and chicks in the same sentence. <laughs> I know. They should know better. No. Um, so it has like, the, instead of having smooth pods like you would for a poppy seed, it's got these fuzzy little things. And you know what? The color of the poppy is really pretty. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try that. Yeah. Add it to the cart. And then, okay, because you, you all know I love, I love zinnias. I love the red man cactus zinnia that we grew this year, and it was bright red. This is pink senorita. So this is a similar variety to red man cactus, only it's in this coral salmon color. So that's amazing. Uh, and then love parade. This actually the color on the package doesn't match what I saw. This one I actually looked for by a Google search, and that was because this cut flower farmer grew it and was like blown away by it and i saw it in a reel and i was like wow like i'm yarrow is yarrow but this one was like particularly amazing so i got two packets of that also i have no idea i want you want to try that name let me see black trumpet no the one above it heck no <laughs> all right let me try salpaglossus I don't know, sinuata. Spell that. So it says, I'm just going to read you what it does because look at the blooms. Okay, the blooms are like this midnight black. So it says, bewitching blooms um, run from burgundy to deep obsidian with a stark golden eye in the center, a gothic bloom with depth and personality. I mean, how can you not try it? How does a plant have personality? It does. Are you kidding me? Come my, on. my entire garden has personality and fashion sense, unlike myself. Yeah, well, hopefully yours doesn't rub off on it. <laughs> All right, so this says sturdy stems, excellent cut flowers, which is kind of where I went with that, um, to add drama to arrangements. Yeah. So, black trumpet. And I've never grown this, never even heard of it. So we'll see. Maybe I'll love it, maybe I won't. And then, are you ready for this one? Do so you this, need any more drama added to your yes. arrangements? Oh so? Yes, yes. Really? Are you kidding? Well, the thing is, I, I'm kind of growing different things and putting them together. And, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, that worked really well. And sometimes I'm like, there's just something off about it, you know. So I'm still figuring it out. But if I find and grow all these favorites and then I put them together and things are amazing, then, you know. Okay. Um, coneflower. So I have not seen this one anywhere. And it's called Paradiso Super Duper. That sounds like something I would name it. It's What's it called on the front? Duper. What's the top word? <laughs> Echinacea. Echinacea, yes. You, you didn't recognize that? Well. Um, so this is another one. I mean, look at that. Those are fancy, fancy. So it says perennial. Um, in zones 3 through 10, a dazzling double petaled echinacea. And so, yeah, 36 inches tall. It's going to be a kind of tall cone flower. But it's beautiful. So who knows? I might, I'm going to grow a whole bunch of these. Who well, writes the descriptions grow, on these? Romance novelists? I don't know, but you know what? Sometimes, like, the name, Super, I mean, Paradiso Super Duper. Sure, I'll take that. Um, I think you called me that once. <laughs> Probably. After a few beers? Late at night. Or no, that's where I wanted to go. Let's go. Let's go to Paradiso, blah, blah, blah. All right, ready? 
and Rubecchia. So this is not a perennial, I don't believe, no, because otherwise I grow it here. Um, it's an annual, so listen to this one, an artful assortment of unusual colors with fluffy, semi-double, and fully double blooms. Tidy plants suitable for garden design and cut flower use. I've seen these in person. The picture here is amazing, like it's beautiful, but it wouldn't get me to buy it, but I did see these in person. I was like, how am I not growing those? So I actually have an entire flat of um, plugs coming from a grower also. So I'm gonna have these to sell and I'm gonna grow them for cut flower and I'm gonna try to collect the seed. And those I think will be a staple in at the farm and here maybe in pots. So with all the flowers you see, how do you get excited a lot or does it take a certain flower to get you in the mood? I'm always in the mood. Come on. This is like my magic trick. Like, is there a flower out there you haven't discovered yes. yet? Yes. I mean, look, that one, that one was new. This one's new. The black trumpet, South Park glosses, that's new. Um, Pink Senorita, Love Parade is new. So there's new varieties. I mean, most of the time I just know like, oh, it's a Rebecca or an Echinacea, but there's new cultivars and new breeding happening. Like I breed day lilies or like play with breeding day lilies. People do that with other flowers and varieties. So I'm happy to- So right that. now there's flowers that nobody's ever heard of that some guy or woman is out there creating. Yeah. Well, varieties within, yes. Most of the time they're just multiply or hybridizing you know new echinacea varieties and you know how i plant seed and i'm like oh this created a new variety from you know the bees created something from my sun garden and i keep it because i like it that's what you do you keep it and if you're if you're a commercial um grower then you multiply it you divide it and you keep lining it out until you have a million to sell to everyone and get rich i like the last part <laughs> Yes, I don't think that happens in flower farming. No. I think it's a labor of love and you just always want to do new and bigger and better. So, but I'm excited about this array of beauty and you know, so that'll happen for my overwinter growing and my spring growing. And I have to really read on some of these, like when do I start them? But like the Echinacea, I will definitely be starting these in February uh, after I cold stratify the seeds because I like to have good sized plants for the season. So, and I have the capability of growing indoors under lights. So that's exciting. Well, good. I think I'm about to plant some football picks. You should. You yes. Should. Some little nachos, some Nice. Some wings. See you guys. Yeah, we have chicken wings. Take them out. We'll, we'll, we'll make some wings. Uh, you, I am the luckiest man in the world, believe it or not. Until the camera comes off and then she'll make me work. Chapstick. Where's my chap? <gasps> no. Oh no. I thought I was gonna get lucky. Yeah, I don't think so. All right. I'll check in with you later.